like a lot of you, I'm sure, uh, my smoking hot wife, Kay, and I are both enamored with the Winter Olympics. Actually, we're enamored with both Summer and Winter Olympics. Right now, we're going through the Winter Olympics, and it is just uh, we just have such a great time watching these athletes um, just go through go through the paces of trying to accomplish a dream uh, that they've had for many many years. You think about uh, things like how hard these athletes work on a daily basis to be able to go to an event that is once every four years. Now, I know I recognize that there are lots of other events going on that they uh, use to prepare for the Olympics, but the Olympics are sort of like the pinnacle for, for most sports out there. And, uh, and it's just amazing to watch them. Uh, one thing that I did notice this year more than maybe in the past, uh, and it was, it kind of hit home to me when I saw the Nigerian women's bobsled team that, uh, you know what? These people are rule breakers. Now, I am not saying that in a negative sense. I'm using this as actually as a business uh, lesson this week uh, in, in my uncopyable uh, business video. Thank you for joining me. This is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad and marketing gunslinger. And I do want to talk about rule breaking. <laughs> and I, and, 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 and let me be clear about that. I'm talking about using rules to your advantage. Um, you know, in in the Winter Olympics right now, there are 178 athletes who are competing for a country that they were not born in. Now, that means that some of them, like the uh, Nigerian bobs uh, women's bobsled team, for example, they are all uh, native-born Americans, but their parents came from Nigeria, and uh, all of these women have a very, very close contact to Nigeria. Uh, and so they decided that they wanted, and they were very good athletes, and they decided they wanted to represent their country. At the same time, it might be, it, 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 many, many athletes are competing for other countries, whether they they um, have connections like like parents being born there, or that they have uh, become citizens there or something like that. There are athletes who compete at the Olympics for another country because they wouldn't be able to qualify uh, for the Olympics in their own home country. Uh, and, uh, um, and I don't know if that's true for these, uh, the, the, the women's bobsled bob bob team, I am a professional speaker, uh, or not, but uh, but there are athletes, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. If uh, and and the reason why I say that is because th the rules are very clear. The Olympics have rules, and they say, okay, here's how you qualify to apply for the Olympics. Now they you know they go through other types of qualification processes, uh, no question about it. Uh, but if all we do is we think in terms of something like this as a simple rule that uh, you don't have to be born in the country that you're competing for, there might there are other ways to get in. So if you have a dream, like a number of these athletes have, to compete in the Olympics, but you can't qualify for your own uh, uh, team, like for example, I happen to know that like the Netherlands, that there are speed skate, you know, the Netherlands, you know, they are huge in speed skating. I mean, they've got a, they're a powerhouse in speed skating. Uh, and there are speed skaters who were unable to uh, qualify via the Netherlands team. And so they went to other countries to compete for them because in those countries, they are better than everybody else. Now, what is the business lesson here? Well, the business lesson here is that very often we are we compete uh, against our competition. Okay, so we we can we can compete against our competition, and we tend to follow unwritten rules of competition. You know, we follow rules like like oh, we say we have to have the you know we, we tell everybody we have the best product, we have the highest quality product. So does everybody else. Everybody else says that, but we say that. Uh, because that's what we're supposed to say. Uh, we say we have the best customer service uh, around, uh, and everybody else says that too, right? And then we talk about price, whether our price is fair or our price is lowest or something, and we all kind of compete on those unwritten rules. 
You know what? Disney didn't want to compete with other roller coasters. Think about it. You know, when you think about the Matterhorn, you think about Space Mountain. You know, these are just roller coasters. And when, when Walt Disney built Disneyland, his intention was to build something that did not, that, that simply did not exist anywhere else. And he want, you know, but as an amusement park, he, he thought, yeah, you know, amusement parks have roller coasters. But you know what? If you compete by that rule of roller coasters, well, then what you have to do is you have to have the highest roller coaster. You have to have the fastest roller coaster. You have to have the roller coaster that causes more, more people to pass out uh, on it than any other roller coaster. You have to have a roller coaster that has more loop-de-loops uh, than, than all the other roller coasters. And those are kind of the unwritten rules of roller coasters. And so what did Disney do? He said, you know what? No, I don't want to get into that fight. I don't want to fight on that you know, at that level, I'm going to change how I compete. I'm going to change how the rule works for me. I am going to build an okay roller coaster. I'm going to build a roller coaster that is that is a nice roller coaster. It's a good roller coaster, but it's not it's not one of the world's best roller coasters. But I'm going to wrap it in something that creates a different type of an experience. So he creates the Matterhorn, and pff, you know, here I am talking about the the women, the Nigerian women's bobsled team. What do the what are the Matterhorn uh, cars called? They're called bobsleds, and so he originally did it with with the Matterhorn, and and since then, you know he's you know the, his most famous example, of course, is Space Mountain. Space Mountain is nothing but a fairly average roller coaster, uh, and but it's wrapped in a it's wrapped in an environment, wrapped in an experience. So see what he did there was he took the unwritten rules of roller coasters and he came around at it from a different perspective. You know, he used the rules to his advantage, created kind of his own definition of it, which is kind of what these these people, these 178 athletes at this year's Winter Olympics are doing. They are competing, but they are com they've kind of circumvented, I don't want to say circumvent that because they are well within the rules of the Olympic games. They are well within those. But it might not be something that most people would have thought of. And I understand, I think it was in 2006, um, at, uh, one of, at whatever Olympic Games was in 2006, was, was uh, um, one of the first times that really somebody did that. Uh, and now you see athletes who are living their dream. They're living their dream of competing in the Olympics, and they found a way to do it that, that seemingly seemingly sounds against the rules, but it's not. So here's the question. What, what unwritten rules are you competing by, competing by uh, against your competition that you can either figure out a way to circumvent them a little bit, uh, that you can figure out a different way of defining them, uh, or even um, looking at them from a completely different perspective, you know, like Disney did? Uh, and ask yourself the question, why are we competing? Why are we competing in that same box? You know how I talk about in my, in my book, Un Uncopyable, how to create an unfair advantage over your competition, that you should be looking for ways to build your own box, not compete within that box. So uh, when you're competing within the box, you're following the same rules of competition everybody else is. What can you do to build your own box and... Uh, Use the rules to your advantage. This is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad and marketing gunslinger. Thanks again for joining me this week. And I will be back again. I've got a, got a good one coming up pretty soon that uh, talking about how you can uh, maybe compare yourself through some kind of a personal, uh, through a personal assessment. Compare yourself with the mental side of Olympic athletes. So watch for that one pretty soon too. And in the meantime, like I always say, Always remember, be uncopyable. See you next time.